fans of Horus Heresy, large resin tanks, and cleaning all the release agent off your models. Thank you very much for joining me for a quick demonstration video on how I wash the release agent off a new resin miniature that I've bought. And we're going to do this with this kit here. This is the Triaros Armoured Conveyor by Forgerill that I unboxed a couple of days ago. I did a video like this a few years ago, and since then I've done a lot more resin models in terms of the prep and washing. So I thought it'd be useful to do a new piece with my current ideas around how to do it. It's a question I often get asked. And the reason that we do this is we wash these resin models so you know when you paint them or if you send them off to a commission painter for painting that there's no issues with paint adhesion onto the model when they come to do their artistry with it and that can be an issue and if models aren't properly cleaned it can affect the leveling of painting surfaces particularly if you're dry brushing and also the paint might not actually adhere to certain areas so it's a bit like it'll shrink away from that area this is hydrophobic that's the reason we're doing this here we are in leaky cheese's kitchen so the way this is going to go is i'm just going to show you a little bit about the kit i use talk you through getting the bath ready for washing it then we'll stick it in to wash i'll do a couple of bits and then we'll be leaving it and returning to it in a day's time when i'll just kind of like take you through the washing of it so it's as simple as that nothing too fancy but i hope it'll be a useful demonstration for you all I mean, to start with, resin models, you should wash them. I've never had a forge or model that I've washed and not seen mod release residue in the water afterwards. So you should always do it, even if it looks clean. And you can see here, this kind of stippled surface here and here, this is actually the residue of a release agent. And I believe they are alcohol-based gels from what I've been told. The good thing is they are water soluble. And what we'll be doing is we'll be using a little bit of regular washing up detergent to help us on our way. And in terms of tools, well, let's just talk about the basics first. You want some form of normal washing up liquid. This is what I have, because it's what I use. So that's nice and straightforward. And then some form of stiff brush. This is just going to be to scrub the parts all over. It doesn't want to be too stiff and definitely not a wire brush. A wire brush will damage the resin surface. It's stiff enough to give it a good scrub. So this is a, like a fingernail cleaning brush. Perfect, I've been using that for years. As you can see by the wear. Okay, right, we'll clear this away and then I'll talk about tubs. Okay, so tubs. The basic premise here is I'm gonna fill a tub with some hot water, add the detergent, put the parts in and scrub them. And the reason we're using a tub as opposed to a sink is because my approach is to wash the model and then leave it to soak overnight. And that gives the detergent plenty of time to work on the release agent, as does the heat of the water. That's why I do that. I've had it in the past where I've done this once and I've needed to do it a second time. So I think the overnight night soak is good practice. In terms of tubs then, well, these sort of container tubs are useful with a sealable lid. This is a small one. I use this for doing small numbers of figure kits, that sort of thing. My next size up is this one, more than double the capacity of the first one. And this is for medium sized tank kits. Again, it's got a lid so I can move it around once it's filled with water. And then finally, in terms of what I'm showing you today, we've got this one, which is probably you know, uh, almost double again the size of this one. This one doesn't have a sealable lid, but it does have a decent lid on it. And this is the one we're going to use today because the Triaros is quite a large model. If you're kind of working with a few tanks, I mean, I just bought them over the years as I did different size vehicles, it's worth having a selection. I've got one again that's about double this size, and that is what I use for my super heavy projects when I wash those. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fill this with some hot water. So time for some water. tub of water I pretty much just put the temperature on full on my hot tap and let it fill so I've not added any cold to this so the next thing is you want to take the detergent and give it a nice splodge the next thing is simply just to put the part in and then give it a good old scrub And as you do this, you want to scrub all of its surfaces and just get that detergent working and hopefully agitate 
the release agent a little bit. You can always tell because as soon as you start doing this, these parts start to feel kind of like slimy in the hand, I find. You don't need to do anything with the casting gate or the keys. Well, I certainly don't bother. parts are scrubbed, they're in the tub and they're ready to leave overnight. So all that is left to do is bob the lid on and then for me to go put this somewhere where it won't get tripped over or in the way of preparing food. So that's everything for this first stage. What time is it now? It's about six o'clock in the evening. We'll see what time I come back to it tomorrow. So probably be about lunchtime early afternoon. And here we are again. So just under 22 hours has passed since I finished washing this and left it to soak. So, you know, it's a good overnight soak in effect a full day. This part of the process is now complete. Uh, what I'd like to do now is show you the effect or how you can gauge if your washing has actually removed the release agent or not. And to demonstrate this, I've got a glass of fresh water out of a tap. And then I've got another glass that we're going to fill with some of the water from the soap tank and we'll compare the two for translucency. So first let's get rid of this lid and as you can see everything's looking a little bit sort of tinged blue but also murky. You can see that the transparency of the water has been affected. The blue tinge is just the colouring that's added to the detergent that we used. That isn't from the resin, but the reduction in transparency is. Let us take a sample. Give it a quick stir. And there we go. It's got a nice yucky sample of resin water there. Well, it's not actually that yucky, but I definitely wouldn't drink it. Now, looking at these two, you can see how there is a difference in how transparent they are. The fresh water from the tap is completely transparent as normal. However, the resin soaking water is slightly cloudy. And you can kind of see that quite clearly. That cloudiness is the dissolved release agent that the detergent has removed from resin parts. Once you've done your washing process, as long as you come out with something like this, you know it's basically worked. And now what we need to do is get some clean water and just simply scrub these parts off in the sink. It doesn't need to be warm or anything, but it might make it a little bit warm just for your own comfort. And I'm going to use the same scrubbing brush again just to clean off all the detergent. And then we'll lay the parts out to dry. And finally, we'll have a quick look at them just to see how they feel and if some of that shiny, marbly effect has been removed. So there we go, a sink of fresh water. And all we now need to do is just scrub off the parts and clean them up in there. So here's one of the track units. It's as simple as that. And here we go then. So I've washed off all the parts in the clean water with the brush and I've laid them out on this tea towel or dish towel if you prefer to dry. I've even made myself a cup of tea so you know it's thirsty work. What I've done though is I've dried this one off manually just to try demonstrate the end result of this process. And 
If we look at the surface of this part now, it's much cleaner. That marbling like imprint is no longer really evident. And when I run my fingers across it, it feels smoother and more grippy. And that's a sure sign that you've been successful in removing the relief agent. I mean, my fingers are, are slightly damp. The skin is a little bit saturated from washing, but nonetheless, I can still feel it okay. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Got exactly what I wanted. This is looking wonderful and clean now, much better than it did before. And I expect exactly the same thing with the other parts as well once those are dried off. I'll leave them to dry and then I'm going to check over them. If there's any more that aren't properly cleaned, then I'll repeat this process and just go through it one more time to remove some more release agent. I found if I don't get it all after the first pass, what I do is I raise the water temperature to as hot as I can get out of my tap and leave it to soak with that. I run it as hot as it'll go. I wouldn't use freshly boiled hot water, which is probably about the safest you can get in terms of water temperature. And the reason for that is I've done a test where I took a resin key and put it with some detergent in a tub, filled it with water. Obviously I didn't scrub it because <laughs> it was boiled water and I valued my hands, but I then left it for 24 hours to see what would happen. When it came out, I then did some tests on it where I cut and filed and sawed the key just to see if the material was the same. And I noticed that its characteristics had changed slightly. The resin was no longer quite so supple and easy to cut. It was harder and definitely a little more brittle. So with the temperature as high as freshly boiled water, you're looking at just under 100 degrees centigrade there and leaving it for let's say a day or overnight. There's some sort of annealing process going on perhaps that is altering the physical characteristics of the resin. And for me, I think forge world resin as it comes is absolutely perfect for working with. Out of all the resin I've worked with, I prefer forge world out of it all. I think it's got just the right balance of hardness and ease to work with. Yeah, I wouldn't go as hot as freshly boiled hot water in this process. Stick to as hot as your tap will produce. It shouldn't be uncomfortable to the touch either. Anyway, I think with that little aside, that is everything I wanted to show you in this demonstration of how to wash the release agent from a resin kit to prepare it for building and ultimately painting. I do hope you found this a useful demonstration. I've had fun filming it. As always, I'd like to hear your comments and suggestions in the reply section. If you can think of any other little demonstrations like this around preparing or working with resin models, please do make them there and I could do another video like this. As always, I will be interested here. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.